There is more to communicating than a man or a request. Today, we are talking all about AAC and going beyond basic AAC. Thank you so much to Jane Button and Ling Lee Tan from Lingo for coming on to the podcast today. We are talking all about how to stay up to date with current research in AAC. I feel like AAC is ever changing. So those of us who maybe have experience with AAC, if we've been out of it for a while, or if we haven't had a student who has a device in a while, when we get back into it, we're like, what is that app? called and what are we doing now and how does this all work? It can be very, very overwhelming. And if you're like a lot of people like I am, sometimes if I get overwhelmed, I just completely shut down. So we don't want that to happen. Today, we're talking all about AAC going beyond AAC. And we're talking about current research and how to learn more about what's happening with technology and AAC. I can't wait for us to listen to this episode. And if you love this episode of the Autism Outreach Podcast, make sure that you subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That lets everybody know that we are talking about important things over here. So let's get right on in to this episode. You're listening to Autism Outreach Podcast, a podcast full of ready-to-use strategies to help those with autism strengthen their communication skills. Here's your host, Rose Griffin of ABA Speech, a speech therapist and board-certified behavior analyst who shares tips you can use in your next therapy session. Welcome to the show today. I'm very excited for our conversation. We have with us Jane Button and Ling Lee Tan. Thank you so much for both coming on to the show today. Thanks so much for having us. Of course. And I think you have done, I know that you've done a really good talk for us about AAC in the ABA Speech Connection, our our CEU membership. So thank you, because anytime we talk about AAC, we get lots of participants. People are just always hungry to learn more information. And, you know, I feel the same way. I'm actually, um, it'll be out by the time we uh, air this, but I'm doing an intro to AAC talk because there are so many people who uh, are overwhelmed by AAC, or maybe they think they have a student who's a good candidate. There's just so many different things that come into play, especially talking from speech therapist side and a BCBA and how can we work together? And it's going to be so different in every single environment. And I know um, that you guys navigate that in all the information you share too. So um, you guys have a great company, Lingo. Will you tell me just a little bit about, I guess, your journey into the field and then a little bit about when Lingo started? Sure. Uh, I'll start. Uh, so, well, I guess Lingo started more as an idea. Um, like, oh, like I'll, I'll start off a little bit of background about myself. I'm a board certified behavior analyst. I've been practicing uh, ABA. I oh, will. I would say I hate to say practicing ABA, but for for to simplify terms, I've been working with children with autism, uh, applying behavioral strategies uh, for about two decades. I was the very first year. I was very fortunate to be supervised under a board certified behavior analyst. He was the, one of the first BCBAs in Canada, and uh, I was just I was very lucky to uh, enter supervision and learn uh, a lot about verbal behavior and uh, how it could be used for children with autism. My first, the first boy I worked with. Uh, Little little one who had was minimally verbal, uh, just getting started in this field, and I was just learning uh, about ABA and applying verbal behaviors to his therapy programs. And within a, several months, he went from not speaking to saying words, producing phrases, and then sentences. And now he's an adult; he's doing incredibly well. You know, can have full conversations. Um, and you know, throughout my journey at uh, working in this field. You know, that really inspired his, my, my first experience with them really inspired me to become a BCBI. Initially, I wanted to become a speech language pathologist, but seeing how, you know, using the right teaching procedures and collaborating with other professionals can really make a huge difference in the, the lives of these children who, you know, need all the support from all, all disciplines. So I, I decided to go on the path route of becoming, becoming a BCBA. But throughout my journey, I realized that a lot of children who are also not speaking uh, don't follow the same trajectory or pathway. And, and many do require the use of AAC devices or AAC systems like PECS. And uh, what I've noticed um, in the province of Ontario, uh, there is some challenges around uh, and stipulations around funding with progress made for each child. And these uh, Requirements often put these the children who are 
minimally speaking or not speaking at a disadvantage because they're part of the requirements was to acquire a certain amount of vocabulary within a six-month time frame. And as you know, using an AAC device uh, or an AAC system, how do we actually get these children going from requesting single words on a, on a system mm -hmm. to learning 50 or 150 mans or attacks for sorry, labels or comments for those who are non-behavioral uh, uh, non uh, viewers on, of this podcast? Uh, and, and scaling their language that way. So if they were not meet, meeting gains, they would be discharged. Mm. And so a lot of these children who are profoundly autistic were clearly at a disadvantage. And I was always thinking about how can I program and teach these children in a way that will help them expand their language beyond or simple requests. And that mm. made, inspired me to create Lingo. And that has been a long time journey. It took me about like almost a year to design the concept mm -hmm. and another couple of years to develop and then test it <laughs> and uh, bootstrapped a lot of my own funding to get this going. And along the way, I I onboarded like amazing clinicians and team members like Jane. And uh, here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. I love that. Jane, do you want to share a little bit about, about your background? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have a, a little bit of a the field chose me type story, a uh, similar journey to Ling, uh, where I was really inspired by a little girl in my community who I had the pleasure of working with, um, applying ABA strategies. And I was just fascinated by ABA. Um, you know, throughout my life, I've I've always worked with children in daycares. I was a dance teacher for a number of years. Um, and then when I found out, okay, there's actually science behind how people learn, um, I just became so fascinated with it. And so, um, you know, I, I did my psychology degree and then I did a postgrad program in behavioral science. Um, and it was on that journey that I, I had the opportunity to work at a multidisciplinary center. And I just thought it was so fascinating to see how speech pathologists and behavior analysts could work together. Um, so I became a behavior analyst. And um, similar to Ling, I, I always had a soft spot for the complex communicators, mm -hmm. um, for individuals who typical uh, programming wasn't as effective for it's easy for and you had to be really creative about how you're applying our science and um you know really digging into what's the most innovative and, and newest research that's coming out and, and listening to the professionals and subject matter experts in our field so um I actually found lingo by accident where I was um looking for particular learners um at a high tech AEC system for them um, and I couldn't find what I needed the system to do and then I, I stumbled upon lingo's uh, software and that's where I met Ling um, and she kindly welcomed me onto the team. And um, I would say now this is about two and a half years since that point, we've mm -hmm. really looked at and honed in on the training focus mm -hmm. when it comes to AAC. There's this incredible software, but that's a very, very small component um, to AAC intervention. And um, like I would argue it's the training that's actually the most important mm -hmm. Um aspect of AAC programming and intervention. So yeah, that's my journey and and always learning. And um, that's this is just step one. I love that. I love that. And lifelong learners. That's why I like our fields because, you know, science and research, it's always, always something new going on and something we need to stay in touch with. So one of my questions is, and something that I think is so hard for people is like, number one, there's this some people were afraid of AAC because they just don't have a lot of experience with it. I remember the first time I ever saw a Pranky Romic device with a lamp vocabulary like 20 years ago. I was like, what is this? Like, this is this is the verb man. Like, I don't, I don't get this. But now I'm like, oh yeah, duh. That's yeah, that's orange. Orange is like just one button for everything. Um, it just now makes a lot of sense to me, but it can be very daunting. And then I was just immersed in helping students who were not yet speaking. So then I was using every different type of application. But if you're if you're new to AAC or even if you've been in it for a while, I feel like the one thing is hard. It's hard to stay up to date with current research and technology in AAC. One time I went to this conference, the ATIA, I believe it is called in Orlando, Florida. And I had this cool job where I went to these conferences and then I came back and I did presentations about all the neat stuff that I learned. It was like I mean, it's kind of like what I do now. It was very just a different funding source then. And I loved that job so much. And to be able to see all that technology, it was just, oh man, it was just the neatest thing ever. But I feel like not everybody's able to go to all those conferences. So it's hard for us to stay up to date as treating clinicians. Um, how do you guys stay up to date, I guess, on what's happening in the field? Uh, yeah, we are 
you know, Lingo as a company is blessed to have speech language pathologists or duly certified SLP BCBAs who have um, many years, I would say decades of experience in the field of implementing AEC for children with autism. And uh, for example, Tracy Lindblad, Dr. Lena Slim, uh, we're also working with uh, Lilith Reuter Yule in, uh, in, in, in sharing some of the research that they've also conducted, but also what they have, they also share with the public and teach at different conferences. So she, they're, they're one uh source of information that we, you know, we also just to, to hear what what what's new, what's coming down the pipeline in, in terms of our relationships with uh, speech language pathologists who specialize in this area. But also on my own, like I'm I'm a person who just loves learning about more, what's going on, what are the most effective teaching procedures, what new applications are coming out that are that demonstrate effectiveness for this specific population, mm-hmm. autistic children. And that's, that's something that I've been generally curious about. So the Journal of Augmentative and Alternative Communication is one, a good one. Um, looking at who the AAC researchers out there and looking at their research articles, see what's what's currently being published. So there are a number of behavior, actually non-speech length pathologists who are AAC researchers or mm-hmm. researchers in the AAC and awesome space that you can follow. For example, Dr. Elizabeth Laura um, and uh, Dr. Cindy, Cindy Gabarder as well. And so those are on, on non-SLPs who are actually practitioners and researchers in this field. And then obviously, you know, you have Dr. Janice Light, uh, Bethany Frick Simler, uh, producing uh, great research. So just just kind of diving in, finding out who the researchers are, and then going through the list is something that I tend to do. That's nice. You know, I use ResearchGate. Like, I do have access to a lot of journal articles because I am a speech therapist, so I get that. And I'm a BCBA, but I also teach a class at Kent State as an adjunct professor, I guess they would call it. Um, And so I get access to a lot of journals. So that is really nice because sometimes what people may not know, because I have more time than most treating clinicians because I spend a lot of time doing these types of talks and looking up research, is that if you just go on ResearchGate and you look up some of the names that we've mentioned, and Dr. Cindy Gavarter, she's actually done a talk for us in our um, membership, the ABA Speech Connection. It was very popular called Motivation Matters. It was kind of like going beyond requesting, kind of what we were talking about at the start. Um, She's really great and she's just a dynamo, has a lot of really good information. But what I love about her talks are she's like all this really good research. I'm like, oh, wow. Now I have like five new articles I want to read. And yeah. I to read all these articles. I try to do that. We started a journal club here at the ABA Speech Connection. So we're, um, in addition to our live seat you, which you guys did for us, um, we do a journal article review now. So we read it as a group and then it's just a meeting. So it's just members. So it's nice because people have their cameras on and I think feel more comfortable because it's not like 500 people logging on. It's like 50. Um, but it's nice because I feel like that's how you stay on top of things that are more current or how to go deeper into the field, you know. So um, we've been having a good a good time with that. But ResearchGate is a really wealth of information. And sometimes these articles that we're talking about are completely free and or sometimes if you know who wrote the article, you can find that person's email and email yes. them and they will send it to you. Um, and um, usually they're more than happy to do so. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice thing. Um, so what is one journal article that you would recommend um, any professional listening read to help kind of strengthen their area of AAC? I know when I have people on like you or Barb Weber or, or Dr. Gavarter, and this is like really your area that you specialize in, there's always so many articles. I'm like, wow, I haven't heard of that one, or I need to revisit that. And this is a lot of good information. So do you guys have any articles that you would recommend that we kind of seek out to learn more about AAC? Oh, most definitely. I'll let I'll let Jane speak first. I know that she she's a, a nerd in the space, and I <laughs> have a couple of articles that we couldn't pick just one article. So I had I picked a few of my favorites, and then Jane has her yeah. own. So uh, yeah, like spot on. <laughs> I absolutely love um, looking at research articles, and I've got a huge folder that's untapped on my desktop of all the articles I need to get to when I have the time. Yeah. Um, I do have to credit as well the speech pathology ABA special interest group from ABAI, the SPABASIG. They're a really great resource. I I think we, I must go, they're one of the only reasons I have a Facebook page still. Um, (laughs) Their page often because they do such a great job of disseminating Mm -hmm. research from both fields, which 
as we've talked about before, that's so necessary for AEC. Um, so I would say they're such a great source for the research articles. And if I could choose, I, I can't choose just one. So I'll give you two research articles um, out of the stack there. Um, the first one is on matrix training. Um, and it's a replication and extension article that was done by uh, Sarah Frampton, Dr. Schillingsberg, um, and uh, Dr. Maria. And they were using matrix training as a method to teach um, uh, multi-component tax using a speech generation uh, or a speech generating device. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I love this article is because it's a, an example of high quality research. And the, our, the authors do such a great job of really describing their methodology. So it's quite easy to, to take that in and implement it in practice. And I love this article because it shows Again, back to our theme of beyond uh, just requesting, it shows another example of how to expand language in a meaningful way and how to do so properly. Um, so I would say that's one of my top articles. And then since I can't choose just one, um, there's also a really great article uh, by Alz Rayer and colleagues. I believe it came out in 2020. And they looked at transitioning from a low tech to a high tech mm -hmm. AEC system. Um, but my, my top reason for loving this article is because they report on some of the effects of vocal requesting and the development of vocal speech for AAC users. Um, and I think that's sometimes an area that we also don't think about is um, when we introduce an AAC system, that doesn't mean for all learners that vocal speech still isn't a target that may make sense for them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not saying that everyone will be a vocal communicator, but um, in that article, they uh, they show how using a simple time delay and differential reinforcement procedure, they were able to, um, to evoke vocal speech in some of their learners. So it's so definitely one I'd recommend to dive into. That sounds and wonderful. I'll hand over the link before I before I go through ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so mine, um, actually, my favorite articles uh, as of late uh, center around core vocabulary uh, mm -hmm. for early symbolic communicators. So uh, two articles that stood out for me, and these were published or released in the last uh, several years. So one of them would be from Emily Lobsher and Janice Light in 2020. They did a narrative review of core vocabulary for early symbolic com communicators. And when I'm I'm mentioning uh, early symbolic communicators, these are children who are just learning their first words, who are not yet combining these words. So, uh, you know, children who have a general a developmental profile or language profile of about less than 18 months and uh, they've not started combining words which typically around comes comes around the 18 monthish uh, range mm -hmm. uh, so we're looking at core vocabulary uh, that the whole the the review the internet review looked at uh, the actual core vocabulary vocabulary list uh, in comparison to the CDI and then there was a follow-up article done by Bethany Frick similar um, in 2023 and she did uh, more of a deeper analysis as to comparing the uh the, C uh, the MacArthur Bates CDI um the assessment there and compared it with what was on the core vocabulary list and what we see is there is such a huge uh discrepancy there. Mm -hmm. A very small percentage uh, is actually uh, from the CDI is reflected on this core vocabulary list. And what we what is um, generally known is that, you know, it's mostly after the 24 month range mm -hmm. where children are actually built, uh, combining words and constructing phrases and and their language profiles a little bit more later, a lot, a lot more at a later stage that uh, core vocabulary would be more prevalent in that use. So that being said, you know, a lot um, from what I'm seeing, just in terms of how we're addressing um, AEC systems that a lot of, uh, you know, clinicians are prescribing core vocabulary first for learners who are just beginning their first words. And this can create um, harmful effects down the road when it comes down to actually building language. Um, yeah. Yeah, very, very true. We cover that. Actually had those authors on. Well, goes back to Nikia Dower. Thank you for yes. being an ambassador in the field. She shared that article blew up on my face on the Facebook page group that yeah. I'm in that Nikia runs. And uh, I was like, I got to I got to meet these people. So they actually were on the podcast and I will link that in the show notes. The Also, the other thing we did with that article is we did a journal club um, just last month in the ABA Speech Connection, which is now offered as a self-paced course. So you get CEUs for reading the article and then also for viewing um, the recording of our discussion with uh, Jennifer Posey. It was just 
Well, that is just a fascinating article because there is so much. And what we got into on that is talking about how there, it makes a lot of sense from a simplistic standpoint, like, oh, it, it, core word of the week and everybody's selling these packets on TPT, teachers pay teachers and all these things. And there's a deeper meaning. We need to analyze it a bit more than that. The other thing that I thought was absolutely fascinating from somebody that goes to conferences and presents and things is that a lot of the ASHA conferences um, are about core, the core word. So that's really hard because as a speech language pathologist, you're going to maybe ASHA if it's in your area, because otherwise it's very expensive. And then a lot of the people that speak at ASHA then will speak at their state level conferences because, I mean, not everybody wants to get up in front of a room of 200 people or more and talk. So, you know, it's it's just really hard and it's skewed. So it's, it's hard for people to know like what is really um, best. So I will link that um, course that we did and I'll link that episode as well that is about that article um, because it is, it's fascinating and kind of makes you want to dig deeper into things that you're hearing. And I know I'm not even going to talk about it now, but I know people now, we just did with Sorry Rise and I'm sure you know her her too, um, a, a episode about Gestalt language processing. And now there are um, Facebook groups that are all about just AAC and Gestalt. And I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to, we'll link up that. Sorry, Ryzen podcast. Yeah. It's, it's a good one. Uh, she's yeah. really good. Um, yeah. And I love the matrix training article too. I'm actually um, going to be presenting with um, Dr. Sarah Frampton on a, a panel later this summer. So I'm really excited about that because I learned all about matrix training a long time ago when I went to ABAI and um, have infused that into my practice. So thanks for mentioning that. Those are really good ones. Um, I know that you have a new training series, which I'm excited to learn about. That's kind of like going beyond the basics of AAC, which I think is great for a lot of people who maybe have students that are already using AAC. Can you tell us just a little bit about what you're offering um, and like what the what the modules are, I guess? I'm interested in what content you're covering with that. Yes, definitely. Uh, Jane, uh, I know uh, Jane uh, has been uh, heading this project. I've been behind the scenes, but also I'll be de delivering one lecture on uh the transition to text, uh, mostly building site word decoding. Uh, but I'll let Jane take it away. Well, thanks, Ling. It's such an exciting project that we've been working on. It's actually been over a year in development, and we've delivered it to a small uh, group of clinicians already. And the idea of this cohort came about from um, genuine discussions with people in our field and also clinicians who have taken our introductory training and said, okay, this is really great. We have an understanding of what AAC is, what autistic learners might benefit from, and how to teach those very first words and do assessment. But what's next. Um, and, you know, as mentioned, we have some really great articles, but not all the, not, you know, as a clinician, you don't have all the time in the world mm -hmm. to take that research and um, program it and implement it. So the vision of this series was to take the, um, what, what research is showing us to date and translating that into how can you apply these procedures to your AAC learners. Mm. So we've packaged 12 different lectures um, and we'll be uh, hosting some amazing subject matter experts um, like Tamara Casper and Tracy Lindblad, Dr. Lena Slim um, and Dr. Lilith Reuteriel who can really uh, deliver in their uh, areas um, as speech pathologists and behavior analysts and describe to us some really great procedures that you can implement tomorrow with um, with your students. So we'll be covering everything from typical language development to topics like Ling Describe. We'll be covering vocal speech, assessment, um, intro and advanced uh, instructional procedures for AAC students. And at the end of every lecture, we're all going to pull out our AAC devices um, and we're going to actually implement the strategies that we're discussing and share our program as well. So that again, if you have a learner, you can go ahead and implement this tomorrow. Um, without having to do all of that extra heavy lifting. So mm. we're really keeping, um, you know, best practice at the forefront here and um, and helping clinicians act, uh, access some of that, um, that research and put it into practice. Oh, it sounds exciting. So is it self-paced or, or is it live? It is both. Um, oh, so okay. it will be offered live. Um, we'll okay. be starting at the end of March. Um, oh. We'll be meeting um, in evenings for an hour. And then afterwards, it will be posted to our learning platform so that um, asynchronous folks can 
gain their CEUs that way and um, go back and access the content if needed throughout um, throughout the series. And that'll be available for six months after. So you can, again, go back if you need refreshers or want to go and access it. So it'll be available. Well, that sounds so exciting. Yeah, those are a lot of really great people in the field. And it sounds like a really dynamic. Um, and so is it once a week you're meeting? I like how it's hands-on and interactive and it's very like behavioral skills training where we're modeling, we're doing, right? <laughs> yes. yes. That's right. Yeah, we'll be meeting on a weekly basis. We, I mean, the other um, approach to this is we want to build that strong sense of community because, again, we know that it can be isolating sometimes. Um, and the idea of this cohort is it's not just for behavior analysts or speech language pathologists, but it's mm-hmm. for everyone um, who is working with students. So we can get that interdisciplinary practice built right in uh, throughout the series. Wonderful. This is such good information. And we will make sure to um, put some of the links that we've discussed today in the show notes, ways that you can um, learn more about AAC, because I'll tell you what, anytime I post something about AAC, people are very interested because there is a lot of learning to do in this area. So thank you so much both for coming on the show today. Thanks for listening to Autism Outreach. If you enjoyed the show today, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode full of actionable strategies you can use in your therapy room. Write a review too. That would mean so much to me. I always love hearing from you. Have a specific topic that you want included on a future show? Reach out over on Instagram, ABA Speech by Rose, or visit me at www.abaspeech.org.